Shalom, giving all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Kakudash, double honor to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and citations to you, Akim, upholding the testimony of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, in truth and in sincerity. And this, is, this, is an, this is an article from RT News entitled, EU Fails to Agree on Russian Oil Embargo. And through this war, we will see a fracturing, which we've already have seen it via the Brexit of Britain, so on and so forth, and other examples in which we can harp upon. But this war will be a significant component in the fracturing um, of the EU of the EU infrastructure of the EU and NATO infrastructure, because these two infrastructures essentially one and the same. The EU being more so the economic sector. The um, NATO being the military sector, and NATO including America, of course. But they're typical. They're, they're truly one and the same. But we're going to see the fracturing of this alliance, according to biblical prophecy, and it's going to be done largely due to this war and the repercussions that are going to come from this war. <clears throat> Pardon me. So uh, let's read some of this article and we're going to get some scriptures and prophecy, biblical prophecy. Finding an immediate EU consensus on banning Russian oil is unrealistic, according to Estonian Prime Minister Kaja Kallas. The leaders of the bloc gathered for summit in Brussels on Monday to resolve the issue. And this is direct quotations in which I'm about to profess. It says, I don't think we'll reach an agreement today, Kallas said, adding it was more likely an embargo will be approved at the next summit in June. Early in the day, EU foreign policy chief Josep Borrell reportedly expressed hope that a deal could be agreed by Monday afternoon. The proposed sanctions on oil imports from Russia will be part of the EU's sixth round of sanctions on Moscow. Since it launched a military offensive against Ukraine in late February. The five previous packages of penalties include restricted access to capital markets, excluding Russian financial institutions from SWIFT, freezing the Russian central bank's foreign currency reserves, and banning imports on Russian coals and various commodities. And it's essentially, sanctions is how you starve a country out. You know, that's why you see the sanctions on Venezuela. You see sanctions on Iran. Sanctions is how you um, basically buckle a, 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 a country's economy, um, its um, economic influence, its political influence, you know, that's, and that's why they're doing these sanctions on Russia. They're trying to uh, break the Russian economy and um, essentially overthrow Russia via economic means. You know? Because the economy and finances go hand in hand with warfare. 
that's why when you see when different ships are traded and you know, like different um, cargo ships with commodities that come from different countries, they're escorted by military ships, they're, es- they're escorted by battleships and things of that nature because economics goes hand in hand with being able to feed your, milita- your military and your defensive capabilities. You know, feeding your feeding your um your people. You know, it all coincides with economics. So that's why this is important. <clears throat> now I'm gonna continue to read. Discussions on an oil embargo have been going on. St- Since early May, with no agreement reached among the 27 EU member states. So, no agreement. All right, it says, The proposal has been stalled by Hungary, which receives most of its oil from Russia. The Hungarian government has compared a full ban to an atomic bomb showing you that economic economics and sanctions and, and and why are they comparing it to an atomic bomb well one for them <laughs> i'm not sure exactly the context in which they said it but i could elaborate one if i believe hungary gets 90 percent of its oil from russia so if, if they were to cut off the russian oil hungary would fall overnight Hungary will literally fall overnight. All right? And so that's that's just as bad as somebody dropping an atomic bomb on them. You know, and even Russia. You know, usually if you if you ban Russian oil, Russia is going to have to escalate the war the warfare. They're going to have to they're going to have to start utilizing the big boys in the arsenal because Russia hadn't showed hadn't, hadn't Russia really hasn't hasn't really went deep into the armory armory yet. They just been using you know they've been using Soviet area tanks and they've been using Soviet era missiles and uh, Stalin. No, not, I'm not gonna say they've been using Stalin's organ, but, but they they um you know just, I mean a couple of ballistic a couple of ballistic missiles and cruise missiles, they haven't really went deep into the armory yet. You know, and if and if they were to sanction Russian oil and completion, well, you will see a you will really see what Russia is made of. I'll say that. <laughs> you you'll really see what the bear is made of. You'll wake up the bear then. Russia is a, a lot more powerful than what people think. As far as not people such as novices, you know, the actual military analysts and, you know, the prophets, we understand the power and the influence of the um, Russian Federation. You know, and their main power, their main tool is hypersonic nuclear missiles. And I'm about to get into scriptures. I know I've been reading the article for a minute, but the scriptures are definitely about to follow. It says the proposal has been stalled. Well, I'm going to read that again, actually. The proposal has been stalled by Hungary, which receives most of its oil from Russia. The Hungarian government has compared a full ban to an atomic bomb. Other landlocked nations, including the Czech Republic and Slovakia, have also voiced reservations over the plan. All right, so these these EU nations are not in agreement. All right, they're they're not standing as iron, if I may. Because uh, let's get the scriptures. I'm good to say I've been talking way too long. It's time to get the scriptures of Yah Bashim Yah Shai. Um, so let's go to um, let's go to the book of Daniel. Let's get this in biblical prophecy. 
Let's go to the book of Daniel, the um, second chapter, I believe it's 33rd verse. It might be 32nd, might probably start at 32nd. Yeah, Daniel chapter 2, verse 32. It says, the, this image's head, which is, this was an image, this is an image from Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The king of Babylon. All right. And then Daniel essentially been the prophet. I believe it was his, I'm not sure if he was, if it was, his, if it was his vice region at this point. He was, he was, um, he, he had high level, he had a high level political office in the um, Babylonian empire. It was Daniel, of course, was an Israelite. Um, but he broke down Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And um yeah. he broke down his dream. It says this image's head was of fine gold, which the head of fine gold which was the, the ancient Babylonian Empire. The the Neo we can call it the Neo Babylonian Empire. Alright, it says his breasts and his arms of silver, which that is speaking of the Medo Persian Empire. All right, it says his belly and his thighs of brass, which that's speaking of the, the Hellenistic Greek Empire. All right, starting with Alexander, uh, going down to you know his four four generals and their their perspective rulerships from Hellespont, Syria, um, um, Bab, uh, the Levant, which in Levant and Syria essentially two and one, um, Egypt, Macedonia, you know, um, and though and their perspective, you know, dynasties. So that's that's the brass, and um, the thighs of brass. It says verse 33, and now the point of emphasis in which we're going to get it further down in the chapter as well is um, right here. It says his legs of iron and his feet of iron and part of clay. Now, his legs being of iron, which is speaking of the ancient Roman, the pagan Roman Empire, all right, which the pagan Roman Empire was ruled by Edomites. Right, when well you talk, starting from um, not the Roman Republic, but the Roman Empire, which this the, the Roman Empire started with uh, Julius Caesar. All right, going down to well, you go to the book of the second Ezra, the 11th chapter and the 12th chapter, it speaks of 12 feathers, which those are the 12 Caesars, you know. Julius, Augustus, you know, going all the way down to, you know, uh, Caligula, Nero, so on and so forth, or, or um, you know, Claudius, going, going all the way down to the, the, um, the Vespasian dynasty. All right, or Vespasian, which is, you know, with the... Um, uh, of course, Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian. You know, so that's the um, that's the iron and the empire influence under those kings, under those Caesars. You know. Um. So that's that's the iron. Now, when it says. It says his feet part of iron and part of clay. Now, that's speaking of the revival of the Roman Empire, which is um, essentially realized as the EU and NATO infrastructure. And now the iron, how, how's it iron? Well, it's iron because they have the most influential and potent military structure on the planet. They do. 
when unified, <laughs> when unified, they do. But we see there's um, a fracture in the unification, and that's that's why that's why I say it's part iron and part clay. You know that it's not the ancient Roman Empire where it's just one Caesar is ruling everybody. His his rule is unquestionable to a certain degree. It's not that. It's not that. You know. It's not. It's not Julius' unquestionable. You know, rule of all dominions. You know, it's not that. Is that sought to be practiced in theory from a perspective of, you know, we have alliances, but that the unity is just is not there. And the power, the power and the influence is indeed not there at this point. <laughs> because we're at the end. Um, so let's go to um, verse 42. Matter of fact, let's go. Let's go to verse forty-one. No, let's go to verse forty. It says, "In the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron," which is the Roman Empire, speaking of their military might specifically. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, it says. And as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And it break it is it, it broken pieces the nations and also it bruised our Lord. Because our Lord was bruised. That's why the scripture said he was bruised for our transgressions for our sake. You know? A briefly paraphrase. It was our Lord Yahweh Shah, he was he was um crucified. During the ancient Roman Empire. Verse 41. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes. Part of pot potter's clay. And part of iron. The kingdom shall be divided. Right. So like NATO and EU. The, this kingdom is not in a unified format. You know, it says, but there shall be in it of the strength of iron because they do go to war together. They went into Iraq together. They went into um. They went. They went into Libya together to a certain extent. They um, you know, they went into Afghanistan together. That's that iron. You know, it says um. It says, for as, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with merry clay. But certain countries are stronger than others. And certain, like, the Hungary is not, <laughs> nowhere near as economically or militarily strong as um, Britain or, 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 or France or Germany. Hungary more so is there for geopolitical reasons. Hungary really doesn't add to the table. They, they actually take more so than they add. And so that's them being as a Maori clay. And you see they're taking more than they're adding because they're preventing, they're preventing the sanctions to be uh, manifested on Russia because they're so interdependent on Russian oil. And so that's the aspect of clay. That's a characteristic of Mary Clay. Also, Czech Republic, Slovakia, it's because of their proximity to Russia. They, these were former Soviet bloc nations. You know, these were former Soviet bloc nations. <clears throat> Verse 42, and as the toes, it says, verse 42, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron, part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Verse 43, and whereas thou sawest 
iron mixed with mire clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of man, but they shall not cleave one to another. And so they unify in, in uh, agreements as far as, you know, economic agreements and um, political agreements as far as the paperwork is concerned. But they're truly not sticking together when, 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 when it's needed. When, it's the, when the great adversary, the bear, Russia, Gaga, Maga, and they're, they're not sticking together in this point, in this hour. It says, even as iron is not mixed with clay. You know? Verse 44. And this is how we know that our Lord and Savior is about to return. Because the kingdom that is to follow the NATO EU infrastructure or the kingdom of part iron and part clay is the kingdom of heaven led by our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shemashiach, the Son of God, the Son of the living God, the Son of the living power. Um, and we know this based upon biblical prophecy. China is not to rule next. China wasn't mentioned in this prophecy. There was no, no, well, let's continue, let's continue on to read actually. In verse 44, it says, and in that, it says, and in the days of these kings, Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom? See, and we see these kings, the NATO EU infrastructure is done. They're about to fall. They're about to fall in World War Three. It says, which now I'm gonna continue on to read. It says, kingdom. It says, which shall never be destroyed. So we understand that to be the kingdom of heaven. All right, We're led by the Messiah. This is never gonna be destroyed. It says, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Because the Israelites are going to inherit the kingdom. It says, But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So all the philosophies, the, the any form of the dominion, because these other kingdoms, they were essentially, they were, um, like you still have the medial Persians. They have influence. They're called Iranians. You know, you still have uh um, you know, the Greeks and more so their influence is in philosophy than their actual power because their power is tremendously diminished with the exception of the NATO or was, uh, with the exception of the, the Roman Empire, which is the revival of the Roman Empire at this point. But it's their philosophies, it's their ways of life, it's the set traps, it's the, you know, it's the Hellenistic format of living. You know, that's still present. The Greeks, the, the Olympics, you know, you know, the, the philosophy of, of uh, sodomy, uh, of, of, you know, that, that largely comes from the Greeks. The yes, doctrine. the doctrine of teaching, the spiritual upkeep and way of life, their holidays, things of this nature. A lot of things that are implicit in this, in this modern day. That's going to be completely destroyed and annihilated at the establishment and the coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Now, um, let's see here. Verse 45, it says, For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver and the gold, the great God have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. See, so this is prophecy of the of the empires that uh, were to come, which most of them have, all of them have came. We're in the last empire. It says, and the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. Now, Let's go to Ezekiel, because since we are speaking on, like, for instance, with the sanctions uh, on Russia, now, we have to understand now, Russia is God and Magog in biblical prophecy. All right, Russia... Yes, Russia is God and Magog 
in, in biblical prophecy. Okay. So let's read. Let's read this in the book of Ezekiel. And this is going to be the last scripture. Pardon me, just lighting the incense. But let's let's read this in the book of Ezekiel. All right. This is um, Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1. It says, The word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God, the land of Magog. Now, Gog, or which, which Gog means mountain, Magog meaning pertaining to a mountain or of a mountain, um, which mountain represents government and power. Um, but, um, the ancient people of Gog are Japhetic. The people who lived in that, who originally inhabited that landmass in the Far East that we consider today as Russia are a Japhetic lineage of people. Now, the modern day Russians, who, who that's why it says against the land of Magog, because it's not a talking about the actual bloodline nation of God, but more so it's talking about the people who live and have dominion over that landmass, which we consider today as the Russians, and as the you know, RT News, uh, Russia, former Soviet Union, you see, and that's the spirit that the Lord made them say that, you know, and we're going to get that in this chapter, why that's, why that's the spirit, but, um, and the Russians are Edomites. The, the the aristocrats, the ruling the ruling households in Russia are Edomites. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it says the chief prince of Mishak, which Mish Mishak coincides to Moscow, also can coincide to the Ukraine. All right, and Tubal, it says, and prophesy against him. All right, prophesy against the uh, king of of Meshach and Tubal. All right, it is truly and honestly, Russia is the king of you of the Ukraine, historically speaking. All right, and then a lot of people say, "Stand with Ukraine." Well, you're going to have to stand with Ukraine in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. You're going to have to stand with Ukraine in World War III. You're going to have to stand in Ukraine when Russia shoots hypersonic nuclear missiles on your landmass. You people are out of your goddamn mind talking about standing with Ukraine. All right. Well, when, the, when, the, when your governments deploy you to, to fight in the, the war to end all wars, I hope it was worth it. Especially you Israelites. It says, um, and prophesy against him. So the Lord's against Putin. He's against Russia. He's against all these nations. See, Putin and the Russians, they want to be up next. But what we just read in the book of Daniel shows that, uh uh, sir, it's not going to happen. And this done, you Edomites' rulership is over with. And you Russians are Edomites. And you are going into captivity. You know, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. You know, you Russians are not fit for rulership. The Soviet Union mind frame is not fit, is not conducive to life on this earth. You know, you, you, you eat them out just like your American counterparts. Now, I would say you are a slight bit more honorable Edomite. It's a tad bit. But you you guys are devils as well. You know, the, let's um, continue on. Verse 3. It says, And say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back. 
And that's why RT News says Russia, when they, they, they entitle themselves Russia and the former Soviet Union, because the Lord is turning you back to your former glory of the Soviet Union from a military perspective. Not financial, per se, but the alliances, the block, the, you know, the influence, the Lord is turning you back into that to fight against NATO and the EU in World War Three. All right. Now, a lot of these nations that's a part of NATO and EU now, they're going to they're going to switch sides to Russia. They're not going to fight on the which America going to lose and they're going to lose bad. And they're going and, and these nations are going to see that. And the, and what America is trying to push, like consider what they're doing with Hungary. They it they're just basically they're trying to push something. Hungary is a part of NATO or the EU, pardon me. But what they're trying to push is completely against the interests of Hungary, and they're going to be doing that for a lot of different nations that they formerly have alliances with in the EU. They're going to push agendas that are not in the interests of these nations whatsoever. Like for instance, with Hungary. Receiving, I believe, ninety percent of their oil from Russia, they, they, that's a complete destruction of their their infrastructure. How are they gonna survive? Like, like you trying to push something like that? Hungry, a nation. If you if you allow nations to be put in those situations, Hungary would just change sides to Russia. Who would not change sides to a, a party that has ninety percent of their oil? Who, who provides them 90% of their tangible oil, their energy. All right, and it's going to be things of that nature to take place in a much more rapid p pace in the near future. This is, I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, which is the Iranians, Ethiopia, which is the Horn of Africa, Somalia, Eritrea, Ethiopia, is, um, and Libya, the North Africans, with them. It says, with shield and helmet, Gomer, which is speaking of Turkey, it says, and we see Turkey, the breaking up of, remember we said part iron, part clay. Turkey is breaking up with the uh, NATO. NATO essentially has ousted Turkey. You know, NATO, they tried to overthrow the Turkish regime with Erdogan, and they failed. Turkey just recently bought the S-400 missile defense system from Russia. They're not trying, the Turks are not allowing um um, what was it Sweden? I believe it's Sweden and um, Finland to join NATO because they uh they house um a certain ethnic faction in Turkey or a political faction in Turkey that the Turks consider uh, terrorists. I believe they're called the PKK, the Kurds. They a lot of political a lot of political people who hold political office in these countries are Kurdish, which Kurdish people in the PKK specifically are considered terrorists in the land of Turkey. So Turkey is changing um, allies as well. That, that that alliance is not going to stand in, in, when, when, when war breaks out. All right. It is not in these nations' interest to fight in that format. And the Lord's doing this. It says in all of his bands, which... All of his band are all those different Turco nations, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, um, Azerbaijan. You know, these different nations, these different Turco nations, they fight, they they take their allegiances to Turkey. Turkey is the um the citadel. That's see, that's the former Ottoman Empire. You know all the all the Uzbeks, all the um, forget the different Turco tribes, you know. But um, 
It says, Gomer and all of his bands in the house of Togoma in the north quarters and all of his bands and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and be thou a guard unto them. And Russia is going to be a guard unto these nations. You know, Russia is going to be a guard unto these nations against who? America and NATO EU. All right. Russia is going to be a guard. Russia and an aspect of them being a guard is through those um, S-400 missile, um, missile defense systems. All right. And that those defense systems prevent airstrikes from being able to be done on these different nations' landmass. The S-400, S-500, S-600, which I don't believe they sell S-600 on the market. Of course, they have it them, themselves. You know, so be a garland to them. So essentially, that's the lesson. Uh, you know, the, the iron clay is being broken. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Machakodash, double honor to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to Yaakim. Shalom, keep the faith.